Hey guys, this is Will from Xnarian, and today I'm going to show you how to use your Xnarian GM suspension scan tool. Okay, so now we are on shocksims.com. Uh, we are under the help tab uh, through software and downloads. Um, through here, we can download the zip file that has uh, the shocksims diag program for the red scan tool. Um, so go ahead and download that. Then you'll go ahead open up your downloads, um, extract all the files. Um, if you don't extract them out of the zip folder, um, they're not gonna work. So go ahead and extract those. Um, you're gonna open up another window, um, and in there you'll see scmdiag.exe. That is the program. All these files have to stay together, so try not to pull anything out. Um, just wanna keep it like that. You're going to get this window. Um, there's nothing dangerous happening with the program. Um, you'll just have to tap more info and hit run anyway. So now we're actually into the software. I have the scan tool right here, to show you how to um, plug that into the computer and get that all situated as well. Nine times out of 10, this scan tool will automatically install all of its drivers. I'll just kind of walk you through what that looks like. So I'm gonna plug it into the computer here. Um, I have this greenish yellow LED lit. I've already connected to this computer before, so it's a little bit of a different scenario. Um, but this is good, this is good. If it's red, that's no good. So uh, if you open up device manager, so go to the search bar and type in device, you'll see that pop up. And uh, this is a communication device, so it's not a USB device. It is on the USB port, but it's considered a, um, a communication device. Um, so you'll go to ports. Um, from there, you'll see USB serial port COM9. That is the port that we're communicating on. So when we go into the actual program, we'll need to see that we're communicating on uh, COM9 in the dropdown. So you'll see that later. So say, say uh, you had a red LED and it wasn't showing up as ser a USB serial port. So what you do is you'd scroll down on the Shock Sims page, down to drivers, and then you'll install the drivers that you need. Most scenarios, you'll just need to download um, the set up all windows um, for Windows 10, but in the 11 machine, you'll need to do uh, the, the setup.zip. Um, I'm gonna run the 11 one, uh, just because this is an 11 machine. So we'll go ahead and open that. And we'll do the same thing, we'll extract everything here. Um, don't pull any files out of the extracted folder. Um, we just want that zipper to disappear. So if you go back to that downloads page actually, you'll see that. So that right there is the unzipped version. So that's the one you can uh, mess with. And you'll just run this EXE. Uh, so this EXE is only if the, the cable did not automatically install its own driver. So if that cable's red, you'll need to follow this, uh, this protocol. But you'll hit yes. You pretty much just click until you're done with this. Um, this is just kind of like a wizard. You agree um, that it's gonna do what it's gonna do. It's gonna put in those FTDI uh, driver packs right there. You hit finish, you're good to go. Um, and then I would cycle the USB um, out and then back in um, just to kind of reset the cable and we can jump into the vehicle and uh, show you how the tool works from there. All right guys, now that you have the software on your computer and you have your scan tool ready, let's jump inside the vehicle and get going. All right guys, we are in the vehicle. Um, we have the OBD2 port side of the cable plugged in. You just saw that. I'm connected via USB. I'm gonna to go to my Shock Sims folder. You wanna make sure to go to, I still have the compressed version. You wanna go down to the one that's not compressed. So we're gonna open that folder. And then from there, open the application again. So scmdiag.exe, um, open that, run it. We can close that. And again, we're on COM9. So I'm gonna go down to COM9. And we're connected, we have the green bar at the bottom, we're good to go. Uh, so now we can start clicking around in the operations tab. First thing to look at is the live data. In here, you have your SCM uh, VBAT voltage. Um, you also have your ride height voltages as well. Um, the shock current uh, milliamps, those are not present unless you uh, click them on in the options menu. So you can refresh that. And you can see that they're, uh, they're there. Next is the live right height data, the little graphical interface here. Uh, we have highs and lows represented in green and red. 
and then we also have the current value. You can reset those mins and max. Um, you can record that information and you can send it to us or use it for yourself for any uh, use case that you see um, necessary. Right now you are seeing the pretty much stock voltage position for the OEM sensors, which is what this uh, Tahoe LTZ is equipped with right now is OEM GM height position sensors. If you had our ride height simulators installed, you'll see a 2.4 volt value. That is a constant value, it shouldn't change. So if you see a fluctuation or you have a simulator in, it's not 2.4, get a hold of us and we'll get you situated. Next is the read and clear DTC section. Um, in here you can read DTCs. This vehicle is good to go, so there's none on here. Um, but if there were, you can record those, let us see them, you can use them for your own information. After that is the special functions tab, uh, which brings you to the ride height trim procedure. So I'll just go ahead and I'll read through this uh, menu really quick. Um, this is just a quick procedure that uh, recalibrates the zero trim uh, height voltage that's stored in the suspension control module. All bypass kit customers that are uh, equipped with ride height simulators um, will need to perform this procedure after they are installed. Um, so we'll walk through that procedure really quick. Um, before starting, you want to make sure your vehicle is in park and on level ground. Steering wheel is center. Um, and don't press the brake pedal, don't touch anything. Uh, just run the procedure and you're good to go. So we'll do that really quick. And again, it's verifying that your ride height position sensors are 2.4. Again, this vehicle has OEM height position sensors. That doesn't mean we can't run this trim procedure. It's still an OEM GM trim procedure. Um, it's just letting you know that if you are using ride height simulators, we need to see that constant 2.4 volt value. So go ahead and hit okay. Uh, verify all those things again, which they're true, so we can hit okay. And that's a right eye trim procedure. Um, that's pretty much everything on operations. Um, we can go ahead and step out of the vehicle. Thanks for watching today's video. If you guys need anything at all, leave a comment or shoot us an email. We're here to help. See you in the next one.